Alright guys, I'm finally getting back to it. It took a while. So anyway, as we last left off, we had the big silver block controller installed off Amazon, $24.99. It's currently running the rear motor only. And obviously we need to install the second controller uh, for the front motor. Now, I know looking at the pictures, there's a big silver block on your lovely black kaboo. So what I've done this afternoon, is I've got the silver block, I've removed the controller from inside the case. Inside the block is actually about two inches free. And um, you see how much is free when you do remove the controller, if you if you do remove the PCB from the controller, if you go down that road. Otherwise, just spray that black, satin black. Um, it looks all right then when that's done. Um, should look something like that one. And it's only half the size. So $24.99, tin of black spray, you're left with that. There's the original case. Uh, Size-wise, that's what you're left with after you spray it black. So there is a difference. Um, it looks better when it's on the front, obviously. Um, apart from that, it's exactly the same case. All I done, literally, was undone one, two, three, four, five screws there. The three, three screws along the side, slid it out, and you're left with that much aluminium block left. Take a hacksaw blade, cut it straight down, uh, make sure you clean out the inside, reattach the base, same screws, zump, that's you, job done. Um, so yeah, as soon as you take the screws out, you slide out the board and you're left with just an empty aluminium billet, and that's where you cut your hacksaw blade. So anyway, that takes care of the look which obviously is important. Next thing to do is to mount the controller. Now I'll edit the video, I'll put some screenshots, there's links to the controllers exactly what one it is. Again, it's just $24.99. It runs square wave and tra or trapezoidal. Um, sine wave's available, it's £35 instead. Exactly the same wiring, same procedure, except the case is already cut down in size, and you spray it black yourself. Apart from that, that's about it. So what we're going to do is wire this up to the front motor tonight. Um, get the wheel spinning. Um, and that should be about it. But this will work on any scooter, regardless if it's Kabo, Kugo, Kugo. Uh, let me see. It's Xiaomi, Dualtron. Makes no difference. If you're on a budget and you can't afford the super expensive controllers, or you don't want to wait long from AliExpress, you want one next day off Amazon. This will be on your scooter next day, you'll be out in the evening for a ride. Literally, if I didn't have to walk through it and take you through it, it'd take me about 15-20 minutes to wire this up, and I'd be on the scooter riding. Obviously, it's going to take a bit longer, because I'm going to give you a clear explanation of what all this mess is. Uh, don't worry about all this mess. I'll just briefly show you, for instance, the only wires that are actually needed to make this controller work on any scooter is obviously the two power, Holes if you're using them, if you're not, don't need them. Your three phase cables, which will be there, and what else you're going to need? Your ignition wire to turn the controller on and off, which is that one. We'll go through this really slow as I wire them up, so we've got plenty of time. Um, what else are we going to need? Let's have some brake safety cutouts, and let's have a throttle. That's all we're going to be using. Um, all them we don't have to look at. We're only using them. We're going to make it as neat as possible with some heat shrink, black heat shrink. I've already sprayed the ends of the wires just to hide the colour. So when we do wrap it up, it should blend in quite well. If you want to go super overboard and don't mind a soldering iron, one of the boards out of this case while you're cutting it. You can desolder these wires from the board just by pulling on them, following them through, tapping your solder iron on, taking them off. That's not a big issue either. It does make it neater. Uh, it's not for everyone. I'm trying to see if I got a controller a second to show you the inside of. Yep, found one. Alright. Is the exact same controller. The 
this is what's inside the box um, and for instance if I didn't want my alarm features which is that I would follow my wires in give it a push so it would be them three and I desolder them from the board if you're not comfortable desoldering them clip them as close as you can without touching anything with the pair of toenail clippers or you can give them a nice little wiggle like that and they'll just detach so by doing that what I've done don't seem like mass amount of work but a little wiggle yellow one left and I just detached the alarm so that's one connector block I haven't got to look at or deal with inside the controller I should have really done that but these controllers probably ain't going to stay on you for the week there'll be something else on you in a couple of days but that's how to get rid of the wires do that before you plug it into a battery or anything because even if it's unplugged from the battery the capacitors hold current and charge still um, they're 100 volt caps so you'll still get a nasty surprise if you bridge across there and there so do all this work before you plug the controller in get it out of the box do the work bite the bullet the controller works as is they do out of the box it's nine times out of ten they're perfectly fine i buy around 50 a month i've had maybe two or three bad ones in a year so when you read the reviews and they say the controller is dead out of the box or this issue or that issue nine times out of ten the wiring is not correct and that's not down to the user's fault there's just no user manual wiring diagrams or anything what comes on these blocks Chinese symbols you can use Google Translate it gets a bit loose when you're trying to do it and it's just a mess so this should get rid of all that problem hopefully so anyway sit rep we've got the silver block in from Amazon $24.99 we took the PCB out of the case we've got our shiny case we've cut the last two inches off it best way to measure is while that's still inside zoom across there give yourself a little five mil breathing room cut we sprayed it black and now we're sticking it on the kaboo so what I'm going to do now is mount this onto the one that's already there just using cable ties a second they need to hold it in place um, if you've got a 3D printer I do have a file available that you can download and just 3D print your own nice bracket that's just like the arm mounts on the actual kaboo itself they're nice and thick they got a screw hole for the tabs on the controllers the amount of no problem they look nice let's just keep that there with one the best thing to do is secure it up first so we haven't got a fight with it in a minute and so we win two of them and so yeah this is going to take a while but it's to save you money in the long run and once you get this down pat you can pretty much walk up to any scooter or electric bike for that fact and throw one of these on there in 15 minutes and be on your way plus once you understand how to stick one of these on diagnosing a problem on one on any controller because they're all the same becomes really easy We'll get down to why they're all the same as we go through the video because wiring takes its time but if I go through cutscenes I've tried to follow along videos and you end up lost in what's happening you're skipping back and forth trying to find the last section of the video so it's best if I just wire it off the bat I'm going to get loads of criticism probably for some things that I'm doing but that's all part of the game and I've already stuck that one in the wrong place so we're going well probably going to cut myself as well that usually happens yeah, one more in there and we'll call it a day on the cable tie The problem is when you repair loads of these, it just ends up not feeling your fingertips. 
he's forever blaming himself. You know, he's an occupational hazard, unfortunately. Right, let's get some tools out already, make this easier for myself. I do this a thousand times a day. Now the camera's on. It's amazing, isn't it? Anyway, let's get that in here. Give it a good old pull. Get a seat again, nice. Right, needs one more at the top to secure both of them. But there you go, two controllers in. It doesn't look too shabby. I will give you an overall view sooner or later, so don't panic. From the front, it looks perfectly fine. Stick a red stripe on this open space here on the front. Uh, it actually looks quite nice. So anyway, let's neaten up some stuff next. First thing we're going to do is wire up the motor. I'm going to talk you through every single wire. At these, well, since we're here, every caveat of every wire, every variation it could be, every nightmare you're probably going to encounter. All going along, I'm going to slap some heat shrink on, try and make this look a bit neater than all this mess. Right, first things first, we've got our holes. They are black, they are green, they are yellow. If you're working with a Xiaomi, they like to mix the green with the brown to make you think it's something different. It ain't, it's the same thing. Um, so that's our phase cables. They're the only colors you'll ever find them in. They're usually the three thickest ones out of the bunch. Well, they always are. If they weren't, I'd be panicked. Unless you're running 24 volts, I digress slightly. Um, what else about these? Color matching. When you match up these three, three phase cables with any controller, if the controller has training lines, what I mean by training lines is on every controller, there are two lines. On this one, they happen to be white. These connect together. What these do is when the controller is turned on is they test the motor rotation as well as the hole sensors to see if they can go into sine wave mode or if your holes are broke or you have none, and then it can go into square wave mode. Um, these only get used once when you turn the scooter on. We're going off on a tangent here. But anyway, these are your sense lines. Most of the time they're white, sometimes they're two greens. If they're on your controller, it does not matter which way you wire these up when it comes to the controller. What I mean by that is when I wire up my phase cables now, I can put blue to yellow, I can put green to blue, I can put any way around, makes no difference. Worst thing that's going to happen is the motor is going to spin in the wrong direction. If that's the case, we unplug the training cables while the screw is still turned on and spinning the wrong way. The motor will stop, we plug them back in, it'll start spinning the correct way again. There is a chart online that is the only useful one. Um, I believe there's 36 combinations if you want to go in-depth because some draw more amps, etc, etc. Um, yeah, you can go that far. You could be out in 20 minutes. So, so that's pretty much all there is about these. Um, that's what the phase cables do. Most of the time when you look in your deck, I see a lot of burned phase cables. Um, Mainly not from modded controllers, but from the scooter or bike carrying too much weight, i.e. two people on, um, tends to burn out one of the connectors. It's mainly the connectors and not the cables. That's why I usually when I keep something for myself personally and I've got the hour free, every connector gets removed. It's a pain in the ass when it comes to swapping out a part, but if you get used to doing this anyway, it makes no difference. So we'll get our three phases up first. 
Um, soldering irons may as well. Cheap soldering irons you get in the hardware store. They're great for eight pound. Um, they're the big chunky things with the red handles. Probably used them in school. Don't bother. You'll never heat up a decent size phase cable or two phase cables to join them with one of them soldering irons. Fourteen ninety nine Amazon cheap eBay temperature controlled. I go through about one of these every three months, mainly because I step on them, not because they break. Hence the tape on this one. In fact, no one has ever broken on me. I've broken it, so I can't really blame that. Quick tip: never apply pressure with soldering iron. You'll melt and snap it. Have a spare piece of metal on your side, a pick, a flathead screwdriver to push down wherever you're trying to solder. If you can push it down on a deck, and blah blah blah. Uh, when it comes to soldering, end nice and shiny. Bear in mind that this video is for people who want to just do this buy their own equipment because all they need is a soldering iron, some solder and a pair of wire cutters. This is not like expensive stuff. When it comes to soldering, we wet the sponge, sponge in there, shine the end up so it's nice and bright, tin the soldering iron, that basically means get it wet. As you can see, nice wet and shiny. If you see anything on there, any bits, crumbs or anything, may as well wipe in your sponge, get it off now. Um, as for my temperature, I've whacked this up as hot as it'll go. I'm doing phase cables, not board repair. So what we'll do, hold the soldering iron onto the phase. Uh, we'll go in with the solder. It'll flow in lovely. It'll melt like butter, basically. Get it nice and wet to the point where it's almost dripping. And come away. It'll be nice and bright. Leave her alone. Keep going. Do the next one. Same thing till it's almost dripping come away and this one next cool as for solder um, honestly 4.99 a roll that's the one I use been using it for two to three years now it's on Amazon next day it's I suppose it's not cheap solder but this one flows like crazy other solders get clumpy you'll never melt the face together honestly this is this is gold dust to me right now. This lets me blast through soldering like no one's business. Next, we'll do the motor wire side. Ignore my phase wires a second. I'll explain them now. I cut them and I have to make my own, uh, my whole sense of wire, sorry. So I'll just get this end wet. Now your preference is either electrical tape or heat shrink. Heat shrink's great, runs out really quickly. This <laughs> is the only problem I use well, if I were to buy it in the pots, I'd be using the pot every couple of days. Um, if you can get it on a roll, even better, but then you step to having just one size, then you've got to buy multiple rolls. So you may as well bite the bullet if you're doing this once for yourself. Buy a pack of heat shrink again, Amazon next day. Everything I do is Amazon next day. No one wants to wait to ride their scooter. There's a pack there, $6.99, all the sizes we need. So that's no issue. All I've done wet up my phase from my motor uh, ready for the wet phase of the controller this is nice and easy so far we get some heat shrink since I got it uh, when it comes to heat shrink when you go to buy it there's something it'll be labeled as 2 to 1 or 3 to 1 that's a shrink ratio uh, preference wise 3 to 1 gives you more working room as in when I go to heat this now this was two to one, it shrinks really quickly on me and never be able to pull it back over the joint. Three to one is baggier and it'll shrink more. Uh, don't underestimate how much this will shrink just from heating. So always go up a size like that. That's chunky. All we're gonna do, this is not rocket science. We've got two nice wet pieces of cable. We're gonna bring them side by side Got a nice flat solder and iron tip. I'm going to put the solder and iron tip across the two like that, and you're going to see them literally flow together. Keep it away from the heat shrink. It'll only take a few, well, it should take nothing to be honest. As long as you've got a decent solder and iron. And we're in. If you hold still, they'll blow. And away. 
That's that one done. Don't be too quick with trying to grab that heat shrink and pulling it down because that is still hot and it'll stay hot for a few seconds. So let it cool before you try and pull the heat shrink over it. Otherwise you'll get halfway, then you're back to electrical tape. If you're using electrical tape, great, go nuts, got loads here. Um, what I would suggest is you cut it in sections, not rip it. When you're left with the jagged edges, it just gets all caught up and it'll unravel itself. Cut it nice and flush. Don't be tempted to pull it too tight where the tape turns white from the tension. Just roll it around as you go. And give it a couple of layers. If it feels a spiky wire, add a bit more. So that's one done. And that's pretty much soldering A to Z. As for the heat shrink, you don't need a heat gun. Don't need nothing fancy. If you've got the time, you can just hold your soldering line underneath it. If you're doing thin wires, if you haven't, get a leg out. And shrink that down. Nice. All right, we'll go ahead and get the other wires done and then we can get on to the holes. So we've got yellow. Same again, bit of heat shrink. I'm gonna have to cut my heat shrink down a little bit. It's quite long. Um, but yeah, this is the same so far for any scooter and any e-bike. They've all got these cables. Caveat is you're running a two phase. Uh, this is classed single phase or two phase? Because this is three phase. Anyway, we'll call it two phase, which is your old school chaos scooters, the one with lead acid batteries. They're standard motors with a plus and a minus. Different controller. Well, same controller. The only two wires are different to this. Anyway, every bike, every scooter so far has these wires. Dun, dun, dun. That's that one. One more left. And then we'll talk about whole wires. What they do. What this. Uh, something I can't even say it. I can explain the hell out of it, but I can't say it. Sinoidal. Sinoidal? Selenoidal? No. Sinoidal wave control or power is. Square wave. Trapezal. And the holy grail is FOC, which is field oriented to control with flux weakening. That's the dog stuff. Anyway, that's our green. Okay. A bit of patience, let the wire cooled out. I really should have put a lot more. We're going to sleeve this, so I'm not panicked about that. Not with this sleeve. I'm going to use the neoprene soft sleeve like off the Mantis. It flexes more, gives up less resistance when you're turning. Honestly, I would suggest if you could swap out everything from there, sleeve wise, this hard coil stuff, with the neoprene uh, soft stuff. It makes it easier to turn, less resistance. You don't feel less drag when you're driving down the road. Noticed that the other day, drag like a cow to the one side. Right. So that's the last phase wire. Now we're into our holes. Oh, Lord. Make sure there's nothing sharp and pointy sticking out. If there is, it is okay now to go around it with tape. Because you've sealed it once, all you'll be doing is adding a buffer. Um, that's if there's anything sharp and pointy. I got nothing sharp and pointy, I don't think. Let me check. No. But I'll stick a layer on just to show you what I mean. When it comes to this stuff, instead of yanking it around so it's white, give it a bit of tension and roll it around with your finger. Lay your finger, keep it tense, and just roll it around. And you'll find it end up quite nice as it goes. Anyway, it's all getting sleeved. Next is the holes. On the controller, holes is a big chunky block. It's on most controllers, most scooters. I'm gonna vape, my bad. Um, right there, digressing, holes. 
Let me explain. There's a block of five wires. Red and black is positive and minus. The dictated, dictated voltage of whole sensors is five volts. Anything more, you're gonna blow your whole sensors. Most of the time, whole sensors blow either from water or rust inside the motor. Or nine times out of 10, the wires just got twisted and a phase cable is bridged with one of the whole sensor colors, red, yellow, and blue, and supplied the whole sensor with more than five voltage. I think they got a tolerance of up to 10, some of them. Um, the good ones have the Honeywell. Yeah, Honeywell sensors I fit. They, they can take a bit, but still, no more than five volts or they're dead. That's why whole sensors usually fail. Good thing with this controller is yes, you can use the whole sensors sine wave. If they do fail or your motor twists or one of them breaks, etc., it'll kick into square wave automatically, so you've still got a working scooter underneath your feet. It's fine. We'll talk about the differences now. Mm. So what I'm going to do first is prep this end. So, sinusoidal wave controllers. They would be your KT controllers, Kuntag, fitted to most of the fangs. Uh, most manufactured bikes, what I mean by that is the Carrera Halfords jobs. Um, they are out there in the world, basically they're sine wave. Some of them you can get are also square wave. Uh, but mainly they're sine wave. There's also Lishi controllers, back. They're all makes basically to do sine wave controllers. Um, most of you have all ridden a sine wave controller because everyone's probably jumped on a Xiaomi at one point. Now they got some decent sine wave controllers as it goes. I can't fault them enough for the sine wave controllers on the Xiaomi. They invested the money on that one in research and development. Not like surprisingly some of the bigger name companies that pick their controllers off the shelf. Uh, discussed down the video, showed you what's exactly inside the original controller year and basically it's on Amazon for $24.99. Just took it out of a silver case, two of them put inside the big mini motors block. Anyway, digress. We've all been on a sine wave. That's your Xiaomi. Uh, feels nice and smooth. And um, when you're setting off, makes minimum noise. Mm, uphill climbs okay. Then you've got your square wave, or as I call them, your grunters. They would be your Kugel G boosters. They would be the Kaboo X Pro. Um, basically, they're the ones that don't use whole sensors. Now, you can tell them apart without having to go inside your deck quite simply by standing on it. When you accelerate, does it grunt like hell and does it pull off super quick till you get to 10 miles an hour, then slips into some sort of quiet mode? You're on a square wave controller. Um, they're great for torque, they're noisy. Some people don't mind, makes no difference. Um, so, that's that. You don't need whole sensors with a square wave controller. So if you find your motor only has these three phase cables, fine, this controller still works for you. Go ahead and knock yourself out. If you've got the whole sensors, wire them up. If you've got the time, you've got the patience. If you haven't, it's up to you. Have square wave. Um, side note, the, the holy grail is FOC, field orientated control. That doubles the speed of any standard motor. Is simply by using flux weakening to reduce the resistance as the motor as the speed increases. Blah 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 blah. I could go on to that, but that's another hour long. The way to think of it, a sinusoidal wave controller, like a merry-go-round at the showground where the horses go up and down alternating, it delivers the power just like the horses go up and down alternating in a nice wave. That's solenoidal. So each phase is getting a nice wave of power as you're hitting the throttle. Each wave is crossing over, it's nice and smooth. Square wave is exactly what it implies. These three phases are not getting that smooth, flowy up and down motion. They're literally getting bursts of current in set patterns. Down, zoom, current, up, off current, boom, current, down, off current, boom, current, and so forth. That's why you get a go, 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 and off it goes. Lovely sound impressions there. Pat myself on the back for that later. So that that's a square wave controller when it grunts like that. It's delivering the power to the phases in such a way that it makes the motor make that sound. Um, 
is efficiency to talk about sine waves more efficient um, square wave more torque it's apples and oranges is what you prefer if you're going for a sleeper sine wave if you're going for raw power torque it up so where was we that went on for a bit although it might give you a better understanding about what all this sine wave stuff is etc don't get me wrong no one doesn't mean one is faster than the other um the only difference to that is foc controllers uh let me see foc back controllers or phase runners uh you can program a xiaomi to run foc you have to use open source firmware on the controller you can also get it to take 60 volts and might be my next experiment to be honest is getting a xiaomi two xiaomi controllers on this running foc which will double the speed of the motors and make it super quiet um, but it involves just modding some controllers so this is the positive and negative 5 volt line for the hall sensors I'm just going to pre-wet them just like we've done with the phases let's get my covers out as well while we're here quick snip I don't know if we'll get it all done tonight but what we certainly will do is get our motor spinning tonight because we gotta talk LCDs yet and that's when things get exciting because like I said the other day you can have any LCD you want on there there is nothing special about the mini motor LCDs the lovely chunky LCD looks great fits the look of the scooter perfect but by no means think that it's research developed and manufactured in-house that is an off-the-shelf TFT that you'll find on some other scooters inside a different case. You can use that LCD on any controller, including this four twenty-four ninety-nine. Um, that's a shock at the sum. All right, what else? We got a tin. This is called tinning, apparently. And that's what it was about twenty-five years ago when I went to college to do this shit. Pardon my language. I don't know if they call it anything different nowadays. But that made me sound old. Right, heat shrink. Let's tidy up this colour first. Don't like all that. Let's get rid of some of that. And as you'll see, this eyesore will slowly disappear. Now, I'll be perfectly honest. I could go ahead and buy the Mini Motors controllers. I mean, I'm not a tight ass. I got a job. I fix scooters. And there's plenty to fix. But the point is, why are you paying that money for exactly the same thing? And the benefit with this is you can decide how much power you want. If you wanted to pull a thousand watts and just want a thousand watts to run on a Mantis, cheeky little upgrade, 800 watt motor will be perfectly fine with it. Then you can wire this up, cut it down to size, you can even fit it in the deck. You can leave it in gear one, which means you'll never pull no more than thousand watts. And you can use the LCD to determine three gears underneath that top peak limit of a thousand watts. So cheeky option. Um, obviously it runs up to 1500 watts out of the box so if you wanted to you could stick it on any motor that is I'd say sensibly 11 1200 watts and run it at 1500 watts perfectly fine and you'll feel the power difference and increase um, there's no doubt about that so again that's a nice upgrade Right, let's neaten these up before they go in. And then we're on to turning the thing on and off. <laughs> and then we're on to just making the wheel spin. We're not exactly miles away, I'll be honest. We've done the hardest part. If you've kept up so far and thought that's not too bad, then you're in for a shocker. Because you've just done the hardest bit. Yes, I know my phase cables are completely different colours than not these. Your phase cables will be exactly these colours. Match them up like for like. The reason mine are not is because 
I think this motor was off something else originally. Oh no, I tested this motor on a Mantis. I got two Wolf Warrior motors on a Mantis coming up tomorrow. Um, both pulling 1500 watts each. So that'll be a cheeky upgrade. It should be a rage machine. And yeah, they make the weird and wonderful all the time. So we go there. I'm just going super OB with a uh, heat shrink a second. Simple reason is I want to try and hide as much as I can. Obviously. But it ain't easy. But yeah, I started off doing Kugos. Um, which was really good for learning problems and mechanical repairs because out of the box they got a few <laughs> but you straighten them out pound for pound a Kugo G booster will outbeat the Wolf Warrior unfortunately to say it I got one in the shed that's pretty standardish um, and due to the weight being less and the motors being equal. Um, is it a G Booster? Yes, yeah, the G Booster 1600 watt edition per motor. Uh, and because it's less weight, it takes it off, in all fairness. Alright, last we each drink on yet, and we'll get these wires slapped in. Then, let's get some little heat wrap. I do do custom work if anyone's local. I mean, I'm busy enough as it is, but I don't mind taking on jobs. Right, from what I remember, black is the new yellow over here. But that's only my wiring. On your motor, it'd be yellow to yellow, blue to blue, etc. It's only because this motor has done a few things already. So we go. I'll just quickly get my fiddle on here a second because all I'm doing is exactly the same as you've done with the phases. Obviously, it's easy to show with the phases because they're big, thick, and chunky. But we'll get you in there in a second. And we'll also have a quick recap of every wire where it's gone so far. I'll blast through it. And if you need to know again, you can just pause through or rewind back. Oh, but I'll literally just power through where every wire is so far. Just so there's no confusion. Yes, I'm pretty much using a flame probe for the heat shrink. Uh, why? Because I'm impatient. That's just a thing. You'll see what I mean when I say I do a few of these a day. I think it worked out. There's only 12 wires to connect. If you do the math, just to get a scooter or bike working. Uh, I fixed them up on the side of the road. I got a little repair vehicle with electrical into the side of me that I take out on jobs. <laughs> it's called the Warthog. That's got a wolf wire motor in the back. It's a bike. It's interesting, but that way. <clears throat> right. How far off are we? One wire left and a recap. all this up.
then. Right, so that's all the holes and the phases all connected up, blasted together. Then we'll have a heat wrap over it to celebrate. The job's good. If I can get a heat wrap out. And we should have something that looks half decent anyway. That's that one. And what we got? Let's have a bit of that one. I put a bit on there because, uh, Obviously, it's good to protect your wires. And last one, I think it's the biggest. <sighs> Job done. So, phases, uh, holes done secure phase is done i'll clip these reason why i didn't shrink these together is i don't want these being compressed that's not a good option best thing to do sounds really silly but is have a gap there put a dab of hot glue in between the gap um not to hold them together or anything but it becomes a barrier which means they can't be forced together then come over the top of your heat shrink it's just an extra level of protection basically I've left myself plenty of slack on this because I don't want this resisting the steering motion. I'm thinking of having zoomf like that and the other one coming up the other side, zoomf. So I got two. Don't know, figure that out. You can put as much slack as you want on it, it's up to you. A quick red bull break. And we'll explain what we've done. Right. Quick vape. Um, is vaping still allowed on YouTube? I'm not sure. Right, sit rep. Controller out of the box, braid black, cut down, not optional. Widen. Three phase cables, thickest ones on the controller. Yellow, blue, green. We come from the motor cable, again, phase cables, thicker ones, thickest cables on the motor. Exactly the same colours, we've wired them up like for like. If you have hole sensor cables coming from your motor, that's another five set of cables, they'll be the same colour, they'll be black, red, yellow, green and blue. Exception, high powered motors, anything over around three, five thousand watts, they usually got backup set of sensors, the colours ready. Don't need to worry about that unless any of you are touching that. If you are, let me know. Um, apart from that, we've got the whole sensor block from there with our five cables in. You see me cut it and we've wired up our holes like for like to our motor like for like. That's pretty much step one. Next thing we need to do is get some power. So... We have our main power, which is black and red. Again, it's as thick as the phase cables that's coming out of the controller. You can't mistake them for anything else. They will not be anything else. They will be these. Our ignition wire. That is red, single cable by itself, coming from the controller. It's thicker than every other cable that is not a phase cable. So all the other cables at a certain gauge, I think it's 22. The ignition is slightly thicker. Um, that's the only way to explain it, and it's the only one by itself, quite frankly. It's usually always red. I have seen it orange, but that was last year. Don't know why that's changed or why it makes a difference. I think it was two years ago, actually. But now they seem to be this. Uh, that's pretty much on every controller. Um, what am I? Yeah, that's on every controller. So what we need to do basically is put an XT60 connector on there. We need 
to have this cable connected up to a switch to turn the controller on and off. We don't want it connected up to the red wire constantly because the controller will be on all the time. We want to switch in between these two wires, the two reds. This is where the mini motor LCD comes into play. Uh, best thing to do is to open up the deck. There's a weird one. Camera's going to get shaky in a second because I think I'm going to have to go in there to show you properly. It is one of the golden nuggets. The mini motor display, I'll talk you through it first. The connector, the LCD connector as you look at it, coming from the lighting control board because everything seems to run through that. They are dodgy um, in a nutshell. I popped, well, I haven't popped. I've repaired three of them in the past week. Um, don't even get me around to the batteries that I've seen lately for some reason. The nickel strips have been cut jagged. I'll explain some other times. Anyway, digress. The Mini Motor LCD, the connector, it's got going from left to right, it's got red, black, yellow, green, white, and blue. This is where people think it's special. It's not. All it's doing is taking power from the battery, in essence, sending it to the LCD. It's waiting for you to push the power button on the LCD before it sends power right back down again via the white line. And that basically turns your controller on. So you can see where we're going for here, but I'm going to make it really easy now. Then the green cable that goes into the Mimos controller. Most of the time, and some people have the impression, that's a communication line. And it's true on some controllers, some sine wave controllers, it is a communication line. Or a headlight line. Um, it's pretty much marked as a headlight line on most manuals. On the Mini Moto controller, on the Mini Moto LCD, sorry, it's not a headlight line. What that is there is a standard 3 volt return line. A 5 volt return line for the throttle. All that means is if we connect that green to this controller's green throttle input line, we now have the ability straight away within three wires to turn our controller on and off with a Mini Moto LCD and use the trigger throttle to spin the wheel using this controller. So straight away, that's all the special controller requirements and you have to have this controller with this LCD and blah, blah, blah. Forget it. Just, just, just literally forget it. I've done this for three years now. I know what they're doing. I know what they're trying to do and I understand it. But forget it. The Mini Motor LCD is taking power. It's giving power back. It's acting as a normal throttle that you can add on separately. By the way, you can have any throttle you want on there. Twist, thumb, finger trigger, um, fucking whatever, remote control, makes no difference. Um, and you can have that on your original Mini Motor controller, on anything, it's fine, it's not a problem. Don't get mixed up in, you have to have this specific thing. Any throttle will work on any controller, full stop, regardless. <laughs> so anyway, so far we're powering on. And we've got our green line, which is spinning our motor when we hit that trigger throttle. We've got two wires left. Uh, let me see. Have we got two? And turn. We should have bloody two green. Yep, we've got the black and the red. Now you'd think that was a positive and negative. Now I think they've done it on purpose to confuse people who try to wire it up um, on other people's, because you'd assume black and red is obviously uh, power in this case it's not I'll show you in now on the board that's coming out the black and red is actually not communication lines one is a signal line for the speed so you can have your speedometer working on the mini motor LCD using this cheap ass controller and the other line is for when you push the gear button, it sends a signal to the controller to change gear. That's pretty much it. Now I know what you're saying, it's got a P settings menu. That means I tell the controller what it does. No. In short, no. 
um, the LCD is STM32 base chipset. It has its own separate firmware. By changing the P settings, i.e., let's say the power, let's say we cut our power down to 50% in the P menu. What you're actually doing is not telling the controller to reduce the power to 50%, you're telling the LCD to reduce the throttle input and how hard it supplies the input back to the controller by 50%. It's the LCD that's doing all the thinking. It's the LCD that cares about the P menus. The controller doesn't know. Uh, the controller doesn't know what a P is, basically. So when you change the wheel diameter, you're not telling the controller anything. You're telling the LCD that quite simply, when it receives the pulses from the whole line, I'll explain this, dumbass, in a second. When it receives the pulses from the whole line to the LCD, to calculate it in a different way, to show the speed in a different way i.e. faster or slower so even ch changing stuff like that you're not changing any setting in the controller full stop yes some controllers you can do that um, that involves USB straight to the controller Savaton Kunteg uh, yeah let's not forget the Shimano Yamaha crew um, that's a different subject we'll talk about them another time that's a whole other slag off um, <laughs> So anyway, yeah, P menu, you're not changing anything in the controller, bottom line. Um, when you change the voltage, all you're doing is telling the LCD to change the indicator to how many bars it can represent as your battery state is. It gets along. But they've people's got confused and thinking they're tied together, they're not. I can rip this LCD off now, put a key start on it, just like off a Kugo M4, apply a throttle from a Xiaomi, and I'll use a manual three gear speed switch and I'll work on original mini motors controller and I can pick any color and any one I want and they work about seven ninety nine each it's great <sighs> right that's that digression out of the way I hope this thing's still recording otherwise I'm in trouble power Amazon next day 12 gauge cable perfectly fine for the job in fact it's more than fine for the job now what we're going to do, remove the two plastic panels there and there, gives us access to our two ports. Lesson learned, try and distribute what we've got coming out equally in the left and right. What I mean by that is if you bring a power for one controller out from this side, bring power out for the next controller from this side. Um, what you're doing is, you know, it's not accurate, but it's the best you can do, is you're distributing the forces that's going to be pushing and pulling just from the cable string the more you can do that the less resistance you're going to feel and you should get it feeling sweet to do these exactly the same as the phases is nothing complex all right what we got i told you i would take you in there didn't i so i may as well shaky cam time so there is what's coming out of the board okay blue yellow green uh black red this is what i patched into red is the power being supplied all the way up now to the mini motor controller when i push the button power is coming all the way back through the orange line down into the white when i'm hitting the throttle the signal is getting sent through my green line and etc etc there's nothing special about the mini motor controller at all. Right, let's get that back in there. Make sure we're in the right place. It's probably yeah. XT60 connectors, people have a nightmare with them. Just make sure you pick the right one. Best way to do these, if you try and solder these and heat the back of these pins up like crazy, you'll find the pin melts inside the plastic block. You end up with a wobbly pin you'll never put two connectors together the pin will fall out it's an absolute nightmare if you get a male and a female stick them both together it keeps the connector in line so when you go to solder it like that um, it's not going to wobble come free cools down a bit quicker as for soldering them they're not hard to solder it's about the soldering iron and the solder cheap solder Cheap soldering iron, keep it clean, whack it up as hot as it'll go. What I'm going to do is tin these. I would like to 
get down on this because I've seen some crazy techniques about soldering these. And I'll be honest, I do quite a few. And some people go all out. What I'm going to do again is wet the wire. This time, not so there's almost a blob on the end to drip off. Literally going to wet it. Both sides. Like that. Now the other end of these wires are not connected to nothing. They're just running through my channel. Get my connector. Make sure I'm going to solder the right end. If you don't, yeah, done that plenty of times. No panic. Put our wet end into the slot. Like that. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is hold my soldering iron across there and apply more solder. Pretty much it. I know I can't really get you in on that, so that's my bad. But you didn't come here for an XT60 tutorial, I hope. Unless you want one. Right, where's my weight? Another thing that's handy is a big weight. A set of hands for the weight holds most things down. <laughs> Let me solder these up quickly. It's no different than the phase cables, you'll see it all pool into the connector. I forgot my heat shrink. Oh, bother. Anyway, it all pulled into the connector. It'll be nice. You won't have to go back to it if you've got the patience. And that's pretty much it. They're not hard. I will do the same with the positive. Let's put heat from going this time. See, schoolboy error. Again, we've pre wet the wire. Get the wire in there, hold it down. You're squeaking like crazy. There you go. Has another one. Alright, so what we go. We now have power. Good connection. Yeah. It's okay. A little bit more could be by the way. I'm gonna make sure your connection is all the way around. Make sure it's flowed in everywhere. Uh, it's responsible for a lot of voltage drops sometimes. Right, let the connector cool down. Right, here's the wires out of the cavity. Now, you can either bring them straight up there and have some sort of trunk in there, maybe, or we can slip them to the outside and keep them. Um, there and keep it equal to this side i think that's the best option so we'll measure up good that gives us plenty right, obviously it's not plugged into anything otherwise this would be a really stupid move but we're good there One, two. Now there are a few ways you can butt these together, which I don't like, which is basically like that on ton. Uh, piss poor connection, don't like it. Best thing to do is get good surface area on like that. So, that being said, let's get the heat shrink on them. 
as best we can. I don't want to be heat shrinking all of it, I don't think. No, it's going tubing. I'm going to just heat shrink all of it. I'll stick one on now as a main. And we'll go. Two on for after the join, I reckon. I like to double up the heat shrink on the power cables and phase cables because they take most of the phase power, amps wise and current wise. I just like to know that I've double insulated them. So that's all I'm doing here is making sure I double insulate them. Right, so let's give our controller some power next. I've looked at a video like this on YouTube in the past and I haven't found one. So hopefully this will help a little bit. Although the audio might not be up to scratch. Again, let's make these wet to the point where they're almost dripping. Like that. I don't even know if this is going to focus or anything. Right, then. Let's get our controller set up and ready. One. Two. Tell you what. We'll get the wheel spinning in now. As in right now. Let's see how good of a job we've done so far, shall we? And we'll call that part one, maybe. Right, that's wet. I would like to hide the cables. This is the last time these black and reds are ever going to go together. Put it that way. One. It's not looking too bad though. Salt. That's very hot. Right, how far off are we there? Hmm. Two more of these. I'm gonna have to call it a day on them. So there are no more heat shrink left. All right, let's join the powers up. Bit of patience, let them both melt together. I mean, that's a lot of surface area connecting, you see. That connection is probably stronger than the wire itself. Get it over there. Double up on that one. Nice. Another one. Put it 
this way, the connection is going to be waterproof. <laughs> That's what they say, anyway. Get the black linked up next. And then we go for some wheel spin. Vibrations. <sighs> I'm knackered now. Oh, it is late. Right, moment of truth. I am going to be eating humble pie if this don't turn on now. <laughs> right. Believe it or not, that's all that's needed to get this turned on and to see if this motor works. Or that controller, should I say, works. So, for the first time since it's been out of the box, let's power it up. <clears throat> there we go, wish me luck. Spark is a good thing. That means the capacitors just took their load for the first time. This needs to be connected to a live. What I'm going to use is the constant live that's there for the lighting. And we'll get this thing going. So all I'll do to test it is get myself a live, which is this right one. Find our two training wires. Remember, they're the two single coloured wires. Usually either white or green. Well, they're always either white or green. In this case, they're both white. We're going to connect these two together. And we're going to apply power. And all being well, that wheel should be perfectly fine and the controller should move. What do you reckon? There's that ignition. Right by there. There's our power we just cut. So for $24.99, 1500 watts. Oh, and it's sine wave. What a monster. Now we need to disconnect. The training cables while they're still spinning. Like that. And that is pretty much it. It is ready for a throttle of any type. We're going to use the Mini Moto one because it's on a Wolf Warrior. If it was on a Xiaomi, I'd use a Xiaomi throttle. If it was on any e bike, I'd use that throttle. We'll use anything. So the throttle is that. Since we're using our mini motors, we only need to use the green line. Um, so that's going to be the next video. We're also going to connect this red up to the mini motor switch for the next video. So we can turn it on and off up there. And we will talk gears. Or how many watts do you want? Because uh, that's a choice as well. 
But apart from that, I'll leave it there for tonight. Tomorrow I will get the LCD wiring sorted and we'll get that videoed. But for now, that's pretty much it. Let me get you out of the holder and I'll give you a look how she looks from the front. Uh, if I can. And that's it from the front. And since I've already wired one up uh, already, let me just put you down a second. Tomorrow, we will have it up to this standard. So we'll have it running off this. Uh, we'll install this 2499 LCD. Um, and yeah, as you can see, that works, that works. There's no reason why anything shouldn't work on any scooter. So we'll catch you tomorrow. We'll get it all tied into a mini moto. I'll try and get a few other LCDs on the side so I can show you how to wire it into an LT LCD, a generic LCD off the one I just showed you off Amazon, how to wire it into a Carrera bike. I'll pull a few to the side. So uh, nice one, see you tomorrow.